Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. We come together on this Labor Day weekend to celebrate the goodness of God. We also want to be mindful of those who, whose lives have been changed through labor, now working differently, for those who are unemployed and underemployed, and those still searching. We want to remember all of those as we come together today in prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to love one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to love our enemies. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you call us to the fullness of your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We begin the Liturgy of the Word with a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dispute the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. But if I warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. 
If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, when your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, Tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Today we come together to listen to Paul, who tells us love is the fulfillment of the law. It's all about love. In these days, it's an invitation for us to love our neighbor, to love our enemy, to allow this love to bring joy into what we say and what we do. This past week, I was invited. A priest friend of mine that I've known since college was turning 85 years old, and he'll be ordained a priest 60 years in the spring. He's been a mentor. He's been a great support. And so when I received the invitation, it was for him and from him that he would gather with four priests in an outside patio, socially distant, wearing masks. We all came together. One of the persons invited was one of my college classmates, who was a pastor in the city of Chicago. Another was a person who was close to retirement, and the other priest was already retired all from the Archdiocese of Chicago. And what ensued was an opportunity to listen, to share. And the host, Father Tom, was really thankful for the love that we had shared with him and how that love transformed his ministry. A very humble priest, in the service of God. And one of the parts of the conversation that came about was the sadness that takes place because of the lack of gatherings and, and how love can be shared, especially among priests. That at a priest's funeral, when everyone comes together, even though there's jealousy and even though there was competition and, and even though all those things arise, at that celebration, the brotherhood, the gathering, the love that is celebrated comes from a respect, a respect that this person did the best that they could in their ministry. And it calls everyone together. And now that's not happening because of the pandemic. And that was a great sadness for one of those at the table. I can remember on the ride home thinking about that, how love really conquers all and that that love and that joy comes from the Lord and, and it's called to be shared and celebrated. In our gospel, it says, when two or three are gathered, there I am in their midst. I think about the power of what that is. I think it's an invitation for us, an invitation to realize that as we trust we trust that this love is going to be transforming and, and has incredible power. I mean, I can remember receiving this invitation and knowing that the support and love of this priest really invigorated my ministry and, and, and how I felt that day, just that little invitation. We have that power and that ability in how we love one another and how we let others know that they are important, how we let others know that, that their support has been meaningful. And that's why I think it's an opportunity for us to realize in this uncertain time that the power of love will transform. And it's important that we all pray about how we can reclaim the front lawn in our dwelling places. Front lawn ministry where two or three are gathered, there the Lord will be present. There's nothing stopping us to, to come together and, and pray that Wi-Fi won't go down in front of homes just at the beginning of the morning, praying for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that a day of education can be everything that God wants it to be, despite the obstacles. We have that power and, and we have that opportunity. The front lawn is open to us with social distance, with wearing masks, but to support one another. It's important that 
we reclaim being church outside of this building and trust that when two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, there is, there is power, there is grace, there is transforming love. Our society and our world needs love. And when there is that love, there is a joy. There's a joy that just flows from that. It's time to, to reclaim the front lawn. Front lawn ministry. I want you to think about that, pray about that. Trust it and believe it. How we can dedicate time to the Lord in our front lawn. Opportunities where two or three can gather in the name of the Lord. And the Lord promises and is convicted that, that he will be present. He will be the power that surrounds us. He will be the light in the darkness. He will be the patience that it takes to live in these moments. We're invited to trust the love. As Paul says, with that love is the fulfillment of all the law. We're called to love not only our friends, but our neighbors and our enemies and ourselves. And when that love finds joy, it finds the power that God has placed there from the beginning. Love one another. Claim the front lawn. Pray for those in need. Let them know. Send them a text letting them know that you're, you're praying for them. Last week I called my niece. First week in school, one in school, one before preschool. How do you manage that? How's it going? And I got an earful of how intense it can be. Everyone is experiencing that, and, and it's our time to reclaim the opportunity to be present to one another on the front lawn a phone call, a text, a message. That message has power. We're all invited to know that that joy does not escape this world. It is truly present. And the Lord invites us to touch that love, to be present to that love, and be embraced by that love, by the way we love one another. As a people of faith, we renew that faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in our faith and our love for one another and our love for the Lord, we now offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray in a special way for our diocese as we transition and for the upcoming installation of our new bishop, Bishop Hicks, that the Holy Spirit may be present to him and guide him as he guides the diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We pray in a special way for those who are unemployed and underemployed and those facing new obstacles, that they may turn to the Lord for strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who labor in the fields, especially our farming community. We pray that the Lord in the gift of creation may refresh their fields with rain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray as well for all those who are embracing these new educational opportunities. We pray that they may not lose patience, that they may work hard, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for some of the prayers that have been mailed in. We pray in a special way for all those who are affected by cancer and are awaiting results, that they may find peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those without substantial shelter or family to surround them with support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are traveling this weekend, that they may be kept safe on the roadways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have come down with the virus, especially our loved ones and those in need of our support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the prayers that are here, the prayers that you are holding in the depths of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you strengthen us and nourish us that not only can we call upon your name, but that we are called to share your love in the world. Strengthen our resolve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through in your goodness we have received the bread we offer you for the earth and work of human hands. He'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through in your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is we right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he has accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. Before man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care. 
to in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets you taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father, most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared in our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits to those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left to us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks. Handing the chalice to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death, his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And then as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice, which you yourself have provided for your church, Grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, with Ronald, our Bishop-elect, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance, there with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, that we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Where two or three are gathered, the Lord is present. He is present when we pray in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us take a moment and exchange peace with those who surround us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, to the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On this holiday weekend, we invite everyone to say an extra prayer, especially for those who are facing financial difficulties. We pray for our St. Vincent de Paul Society that responds to the needs of so many. We also wish everyone who is traveling to be safe, that they may reach all their destinations safely. And once again, in the bulletin is an article about Front Lawn Ministry and how we need to reclaim that opportunity to trust in what the Lord tells us, that love is gonna conquer all things, and when two or three are gathered in his name, the presence of the Lord will be with us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.